Hey y'all, we are Hannah and Jeremy from The Savory Suitcase. We are documenting our adventures and sharing our trips locally around Florida, domestically around the U.S., and internationally to places like Iceland and Costa Rica. We've also been booking about a cruise or two each year, and today we begin our new series, A Caribbean Cruise on the Celebrity Ascent. This video will take you through our full experience on the ship, including a ship tour, the food, the entertainment, the special double captains on this cruise, and much more. This cruise left in late February from Port Everglades and was a seven night itinerary. Let's start with the most recognizable part of any ship, the pool deck. The main pool deck is open to all guests and also features two champagne whirlpools. This ship also features a solarium which is restricted to only guests over 16 and is fully covered. Along the main pool deck you'll find the Mast Grill which is a quick service restaurant. From the pool deck, you will see the most recognizable aspect of any Edge class ship. The Magic Carpet is a unique feature on the Edge class ships for Celebrity, as it functions as a restaurant in the evening, but most of the day it is a bar located either on deck 14 or 16. It can also be located on deck 5, as well as deck 2, which is where it helps passengers board tender boats. On sea days, it was a great place for a completely unobstructed ocean view. The bar does have a specialty drink menu, which is pretty much the case for many of the ship's bars, but you can also have them make regular drinks as well. We found that at times it was not very busy, but during other times it was very crowded, especially on embarkation day, understandably. Up on deck 15, you'll find the rooftop garden. This outdoor space, as its name suggests, has live plants, and this is where you'll find the rooftop garden grill, which, spoiler alert, was our favorite restaurant on board. We came up here during sail away about an hour before the scheduled departure and found some lounge chairs to wait for the sound of the ship's horn signifying that we were underway. This area did fill up while we waited, but it was a pretty good spot for the views. On deck 15 at the after the ship, you will find the sunset bar, which was incredibly busy during sail away. We found our way there during the sunset on one of the days leaving port, and it was a beautiful spot. We also chose that day to make our reservation at the rooftop garden grill, which we'll share more about a little bit later.
the aft of the ship, down on deck 5, you'll find the venue Eden. We say venue because the space has quite a few different functions, including a bar, a specialty restaurant, and in the evening services as a performance space. found some of the most eccentric drinks in Eden, but that really did fit the theme of the space and its performances. Outside of Eden, you'll find the promenade deck. It is mostly blocked by lifeboats and equipment, but it was pretty interesting looking at those anyways, so it is worth a trip down there. On decks 3, 4, and 5, you'll find the entertainment venues, the theater, and the club. We only ended up in the club for trivia, but I believe this is where they also host bingo. Questions of different categories. Paper and pencils are right there. We have a small. This is also the area where you'll find the shops, shore excursion desk, and the photo studio. That leads us to the Grand Plaza, which is really the heart of the ship, featuring the Martini Bar, as well as a group of bartenders who show off a pretty unique set of skills. Across from the Grand Plaza, you'll find Le Grand Bistro, a specialty restaurant with an additional cost during the day, and it transforms into a special dining experience called La Petite Chef in the evenings. Now that we've toured around most of the public areas on the ship, let's head into our room. We were allowed to enter shortly after coming on board and dropped off our bags so we didn't have to carry them around for the rest of the afternoon. We did the safety videos on our drive over, but we were greeted with a little jingle about hand hygiene in the room. Well, so he's saying, if I can wash eight, you can wash two. The room featured a couch. Ours was not a pullout. 
and we also had a vanity where we found our excursion tickets and some information about the behind the scenes tour that we booked. This room is called a deluxe porthole view stateroom with veranda. And unlike some of the infinity and verandas on the ship, this kind of room has a completely separate outdoor space. The room had a full-length closet, as well as a lower cabinet, a set of drawers, and a mini fridge. We asked our room attendant to empty it so that we could store the soda that we brought on board in our mini fridge. The bathroom was fairly standard for a cruise ship, with a relatively small shower, but the shampoo and soap did smell very nice. My parents joined us on this cruise, and they had an accessible cabin, which had a few different features, including an automatic door, a much larger floor space to accommodate scooters or wheelchairs, and a bathroom with no threshold or step up. Their room also featured the infinite veranda, which is the window that rolls down instead of a full balcony. So that shows you how those rooms are a little different from ours. We booked the behind the scenes tour of the ship, which was about $130 per person. Unfortunately, there were no photos or videos allowed. We grabbed a few clips from the captain's social media to show you a little bit, but the tour included a visit to the bridge, which was definitely our favorite spot, the engine control room, the storage rooms for all of the onboard kitchens, the laundry facilities and recycling areas. This was about a two hour tour, but definitely worth it if you find any of the engineering or inner workings of a cruise ship interesting. Our cruise featured not just one, but two captains who also happen to be brothers. Every three months or so, they do a brother's cruise so they get the chance to sail together. Uh, at sea, two brothers to serve as captains of the same vessel. How cool is that, right? So this committee is overseen by two of them right here, right now. Please welcome to the stage our captains, Captain Tassos and Demetrius Capatine. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you're all very excited to see that on this cruise you have the unique opportunity to have two captains navigating safely, hopefully, this beauty. <laughs> Don't worry, I heard so many people that say, oh, captain, please make sure we go to this place safely. I say you forget one thing, that we are on board as well. <laughs> so we're highly motivated. <laughs> It's not a remote control game. Oops. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> by, by the sound of this, that was a small boy. <laughs> it stays between us. <laughs> so. Allow us now to introduce ourselves. My name is Tassos Kafedzis and I was born and raised in Athens, Greece. And my name is Dimitris Kafedzis. I was also 
wait, wait, <laughs> wait for your cue. And I was also born and raised in Greece 11 years before Tasso's death. <laughs> These are pure memories, so you're gonna get. They did an introduction on the first night, as well as a special talk on the last day to share about the process of setting up the ship during its inaugural season. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so we're ready to start? We were born ready. There you go. It doesn't work. <laughs> this layout of a bridge, and as you can see, the controls and the screens are retractable. They can go up one foot up and down and you might figure it out by now that not all captains are 6'2 so they came prepared from 5.5 up to 6'6 that's how it looks during the night it's like a spaceship yeah I wanted to and as you see nobody guy. is on like, the bridge <laughs> this is this should not alarm you because if something goes south I get a text <laughs> No, just a simple text. Run. That's it. <laughs> and it means that the bow is tilting backwards. So what I have done here, a very hydrodynamic uh, bow with a very slick design that cuts through the water like no tomorrow. And that gives huge fuel efficiency to this ship. It's like a torpedo. They actually have combined the technology from half a century ago that uh, the ships were razor sharp by bows and combined with the barbos bow that now has it weighs 58 tons oh, wow. and it can move from deck 2 all the way to deck 16 it can stop in four spots on deck 2 on deck 5 on deck 14 and deck 16. <coughs> when we have rough seas we always put it on deck 14 because we have what we call the storm pins so steel pins goes inside the carpet and secure it. So the left. And storm pins. It's not less than often that people come out early in the morning <laughs> with, with the birth suit. <laughs> That's a and distraction. Yeah, they are looking straight at us like, I said, do we have a mirror here? <laughs> if you can see us, we can see you as well. <laughs> We are planning to make a full separate video about the food on board, so we'll give you a brief overview of the food and drinks as well as the main dining and specialty restaurants in this video. The Edge class ships have a unique dining experience where there are multiple main dining rooms to choose from, each with their own exclusive items as well as offering the classics available across all restaurants. Our first night was in Tuscany. This is an Italian themed restaurant offering a lot of different pasta dishes. The next day we visited Normandy, which features contemporary French cuisine. The third restaurant is the Cosmopolitan, which is a modern take on the classic cruise ship main dining room, or MDR. This is also where they serve breakfast.
On our last night, we dined at the Cyprus restaurant, which has arguably the best art in the entire cruise ship. This is a Mediterranean themed menu, including grilled octopus, if you're brave enough for that. The wait staff also helped us celebrate Jeremy's birthday. In addition to the included restaurants, there are also a number of specialty restaurants on board. We didn't get to try all of them, such as Raw and Five that we never made it to, but we did get to make it to about half of them. We visited the Grand Bistro twice. Once was for the lunch menu, which is billed as a single cover charge. We did this on the first day before we sailed away since the buffet is usually very busy on embarkation day. We came back one evening to experience the transformation into La Petite Chef, which is both a meal and an animated show. This was such a fun experience. There was a prefix menu and we found the food to be delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, please open the book in front of you in the middle and make sure the pages are perfectly aligned with a rectangle of light of fairy dust. Oh. By creating a magical soup, le petit... Ah, oh, raspberry coulis! Ah, yeah. oh, guys, there's nothing left for me to create a dessert with. Ah, oh, don't worry, there's more food in there. Okay. On the evening that we were leaving Tortola, Around sunset time, we made a reservation at the Rooftop Garden Grill. This is also a per person cover charge, which includes whatever you choose off of the menu. And if the waiter recommends that you get the cookie for dessert, cookie? you should believe him. Cookie? 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 cookie. There are also a number of quick service restaurants on board, including the cafe for specialty coffees, the mast grill, and the galleria, which is where you can get unlimited soft serve and ice cream. And towards the aft of the ship, you can find the nearly 24-hour pizza. We recommend enjoying it with sunset views. The Ocean View Cafe is the buffet that's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We found the food on the buffet to be quite good with a very large variety that was always available. Sometimes it was basically empty, but sometimes it was very, very full. 
On the last day, they offered a special going away buffet, which had shrimp and crawfish and some specialty dishes, as well as a chocolate fondue fountain. We even saw 50% of the captains there. You may not know this about me, but I studied art history in college, and I used to spend a lot of time in art museums. The celebrity cruise ships go well and beyond the typical cruise ship art auction collection, and they have really curated a fantastic collection with hundreds of pieces on board. The most immersive piece is the Journey to Eden, which is an installation of mirrors and bronze statues that creates an infinite reflection on the way to the Eden restaurant. The rest of the ship is full of sculptures and paintings and many more installations. On the way down to the restaurants, you should also be sure to stop by the installation that has created a peek into the hall of the ship. The shows on The Ascent were good. Not just cruise ship good, but actually well done, entertaining, and innovative. We saw the stage production only one of the nights, and we saw a performance in Eden the other night. But from all accounts, every show that was put on in the theater was spectacular. The show in Eden was a little more on the odd side, but was still amusing. The seating in Eden is also a little odd, so be sure to arrive early for a good seat. If stage shows just aren't your thing, there were also plenty of parties like dancing at the silent disco where you can pick your own music genre. There is also live music in the Grand Plaza, as well as the bar show from the Martini Bartenders. That happens twice an evening, so check the schedule for times.
On the second fancy night, they also host a light the night party with glow sticks and sequins as far as the eye can see. The Ascent is currently running two different itineraries in the Caribbean, an Eastern and a Western. We opted for the more Eastern itinerary, which took us to San Juan, Puerto Rico, Tortola, and St. Kitts. We will do specific videos from each port, but here are a few of the highlights. In Puerto Rico, we booked an excursion through Celebrity. We picked the San Juan Food and Culture Tour. We got to sample a few local dishes and even make our own mofongo. In Tortola, we decided to be brave and rented a car on our own. I say that this was brave because they drive on the opposite side of the road than we are used to. However, the car was still a left-hand drive. The island is also quite mountainous, which is very different from our hometown in Florida. In St. Kitts, we booked another excursion with Celebrity, and we opted for the Scenic Railway. The views were certainly impressive, but the train felt like it was possibly at risk for not making it through the entire trip. St. Kitts was one of the most picturesque ports with stunning views from the top deck while we were in port. Thanks for joining us today as we explored this amazing celebrity cruise ship. We hope that you learned a little bit about the ascent and we answered any questions that you might have for an upcoming trip. Please leave us a comment about anything that you might still be curious about. Subscribe to see the rest of our Ascent series when it comes out, and we will see you there.